Let's zoom into this collecting duct and look at the cells that are regulated by ADH. ADH is a peptide hormone. So instead of entering the cell like angiotensin does, the first step is shown right here. ADH is going to bind to a membrane receptor. Uh, in the cells of the collecting duct. This is gonna activate CAMP, which is a second messenger. The second messenger is going to cause the um, activation of these storage vesicles and then insertion of aquaporin into the membrane. So instead of changing gene expression, um, we're changing mostly the insertion via exocytosis. So this vesicle becomes part of the membrane and contains aquaporin. The last step then is going to be increased reabsorption of water. And this is into the vasa recta. Does that make sense? Opposed to the paratubular capillaries? It does. Okay, let's look at this entire process of ADH, starting with the, the stimulus and um, looking at feedback. So there's a couple different stimuli. One is increased osmolarity. This is of the ECF. Similar, similar stimulus is increased sodium concentration. A different stimulus from that is, in, is decreased blood pressure. These may or may not be related stimuli. We'll come back to when they differ. They're detected by different things. So mean arterial blood pressure is gonna be detected by baroreceptors. And osmolarity is gonna be detected by osmoreceptors. These osmoreceptors are in the hypothalamus which makes a lot of sense because the hypothalamus is, regulates thirst, also regulates the posterior pituitary. And what is released by the posterior pituitary? ADH, which triggers um, aquaporin insertion in the collecting duct and thereby triggers water reabsorption. A useful thing to have happen if we have high osmolarity. So this is going to feed back and turn off, um, turn off our hypothalamus. Lovely. Now, low blood pressure is going to decrease baroreceptor firing. That's going to increase sympathetic nervous system. Which is going to target renin release from the granular cells of the kidney they're going to release renin, which is going to target aldosterone. Aldosterone triggers the release of ADH from the posterior pituitary. Remember that, one of the four effects of aldosterone. Aldosterone is also going to result in vasoconstriction, increased thirst, um, and increased angiotensin. I'm sorry, this should be angiotensin. Renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So it is also going to increase aldosterone to result in sodium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule, vasoconstriction, and increased thirst actually at the hypothalamus. Angiotensin is what triggers ADH release from the posterior pituitary. Lastly, one more connection to make here is that 
decreased blood pressure also targets the granular cells directly. They have baroreceptors that detect low blood pressure and cause the release of renin. Cool stuff, huh? It is. Okay, here's a learning check for you. Read it and don't weep. <laughs> 